Chicken Grain Commodity Program, 29 minutes long. Welcome to another edition of U.S. Farm Report, brought to you today and each week at the same time by members of the National Farmers Organization in this TV area, in the interest of agriculture, rural business, and the well-being of our nation. The National Farmers Organization Grain Marketing Program is currently very much in the news and is considered a very significant breakthrough in farmers' efforts to raise and stabilize farm prices from the disastrously low levels of recent years. Today's U.S. Farm Report will bring to you some of the many developments that led up to the large sales of grain by members of the NFO over vast areas of the grain-producing region of the United States. Leading today's U.S. Farm Report discussion is Oren Lee Staley. Another significant and very important and successful step in collective bargaining has been taken by the NFO. The NFO coordinated a grain bargaining and sales effort program throughout a 16-state area. This happened at 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time on February the 23rd. Since that time, many people have been wondering just what happened. Some of the news media, in fact most of it, did an excellent job of reporting of what had been said about the operation as far as the NFO and carried, of course, some of the comments of those that oppose our effort. Others gave out a confused and certainly not factual stories, but this was to be expected uh, because some were going to be able to do a factual job of reporting and others were not because depending on their source of information. We want to clear up this these points that were made and to show to the listening audience, uh, the American farmers, and of course those that are listening in the rural towns and the large cities, of how this effort was carried out, because it was a very significant effort. There are many that have asked, uh, well, how could it happen? And some of those in the grain trade even said it was impossible, it could not have happened, because you just couldn't coordinate an effort over a 16-state area as the NFO said they did. Some of the people have referred in our organization I'm speaking of that this was uh, comparable in many ways uh, as the way it was operated to D-Day in World War II. Some said this was D-Day in agriculture for the grain farmers. This really demonstrated farmers' bargaining power uh, because it demonstrated that a coordinated effort whereby farmers could sell together has really shook the grain trade. As one man in Washington said uh, over the telephone, as he analyzed what was happening from the reports that he was getting, that the farmers had invaded the field of economics that had been the sole field of the speculators in the grain trade. And he said the part that has really confused them and made them nervous was that they didn't know you were going to invade the field. And so this is important. The whole effort of this program, of course, was to establish farmers' bargaining power in grain as we're also working on dairy and meat. And also the important thing was to demonstrate to everybody that this coordinated sale was a step in what was so significant because this is starting to make it possible for farmers to put the price tag on their grain and even more important, for the price of grain to be established on cash sales rather than on the whims of the speculators that have in the past determined to a great degree the price for grain. I have with me today the director of the Grain Commodity Department, Herb Goodman, on my right here. And on my left, I have John Ingalls, who is uh, Herb's direct assistant. Herb, uh, what is your comment? You're the one that directed the operation. What is your comment? What's your observation? Well, first, Orrin Lee, I think there are one or two significant points that should be brought out here. One, this is the first coordinated sale of uh, grain by any 
farm group over such a large area. It is also the first time in the history that we have seen collective bargaining play an important part in the sale of the uh, NFO members' grain production. Uh, we might uh, say at this point that we have cleared the initial hurdle because through our organizational efforts and the structure within NFO, we have been able to at least uh, take the initiative at this point. Now, basically, I think this boils down to the fact that we have the organizational structure that gives us the capability of making this type of a sale or other types of sales. And certainly, this is not an indication, Ornley, that all of our grain program is going to uh, revolve around this type of a sale. We have many other uh, plans that will be put into effect later on. So just as we had announced, Herb, that we had made a sale, that NFO in, in behalf of its members had made sales representing uh, many, many millions of bushels of grain, uh, soybeans, corn, uh, some milo, uh, feed grains, and some wheat, but the major volume was in the many millions of bushels that was sold at 2.30 p.m. Central Standard Time uh, over the 16-state area uh, on February the 23rd. John, uh, you worked in the national office and you uh, were there and helping coordinate it as a direct assistance of Herb. Uh, John, uh, what was your observation of the effort? Well, Lauren Lee, it uh, seemed to me that it was rather amusing in a way because this gave our members the first opportunity that they had ever had to answer the grain trade in a group selling program. And the thing that impressed me the most, of course, was the enthusiasm and the co coordination out here among our membership, and also the fact that uh, this disproved once and for all the statement that's been made so many times about our farmers that they will not work together. I think our members lunged at that opportunity, and I think they did a real good job at it. Well, John, this should be an experience that uh, has been very intriguing and exciting for our members and our leaders. Uh, what uh, it really amused us, of course, and amazed us that uh, uh, even some reports uh, got to coming from the grain trade that they couldn't even uh, find uh, where any sales had been made. Uh, trying to refute the whole effort. Of course, uh, the people that were making the statements uh, are, in most cases, I guess, disappointed buyers that uh, didn't get to buy any of the grain, or you might say nervous speculators. Uh, what, was your, uh, what was your observation on this, or thinking, you might say? Well, my thinking on this, Warren Lee, was simply that it seemed to me that many of our news media and so forth were getting their information from the wrong sources. Or, uh, Perhaps they were misled or hadn't read carefully enough the reports that were given. Uh, actually, we did make a, a large sale here, and I think that we had them pretty badly confused. Well, this is right, John. There's no question about it. Uh, as somebody said, uh, it wasn't only the volume that impressed the grain trade. Uh, it was the fact that they were just so fearful of if a coordinated effort like this could be carried out all over. Uh, the country wants, uh, then what is to keep farmers from doing it uh, again and again and seeing the price uh, hold their grain, they store it uh, and keep the price go up and then sell at the opportune time? Uh, how can the speculators uh, really know what's going on? Of course, I think we have to compliment uh, many of the uh, news media sources for the excellent job they did, John. Uh, uh, many calls that came to the national office and we tried to explain to them how this coordinated effort uh, was existing. Uh, this, I think, there to be complimented, and of course, those that uh, only <laughs> got the stories out from the grain trade and the, and the grain buyers uh, and the comments uh, insinuating that uh, nothing had really happened and nothing had been sold. Well, the serious part about this is that uh, the farmers out there actually doing the farming and the members uh, knowing that in almost uh, all the counties and right here uh, the counties that we're going to talk about this great state of Iowa today, a great agricultural producing state as all the other states are, uh, 
that uh, the people here that we're going to now interview on the television here, uh, have them make their statements, were a part of the sale. Uh, the sad part is that uh, farmers out there knowing what's going on uh, are uh, really, they begin to wonder what they can read in some of the newspa uh, newspapers uh, because uh, they know the sales happened, uh, they were part of it, uh, their neighbors know it, and uh, so they wonder if they can't get factual reports on this, uh, how they ever get any factual reports, uh, and how, uh, well, uh, some of the farm, one farmer said uh, a day or so ago, he said, you know, I wonder now how I was ever informed on anything with some of the things that I read and hear on comments. But this is beside the point. Uh, um, the job of story of coverage uh, on a very confused uh, story is this because it was new, it was dynamic, it covered such a large area, was uh, followed very closely by many of the large reputable papers and the, the war services and they did an excellent job on it. Uh, and now we're going to try to bring everybody uh, up to date, uh, Herb, uh, how it did happen and get the factual story out of how many millions of bushels were sold in this coordinated effort. Herb, uh, you have with you uh, many of your assistants today. I don't know them all. Uh, you're going to have to introduce them here and uh, let them uh, say to the audience where they're from. And, and of course, I think we want to stress first that this structure, or very close to this structure, existed over the entire 16 state area. And that uh, we're just using Iowa today because it's uh, these uh, uh, people in the state of Iowa, of course, are very close to the national office, and it was uh, convenient to bring them in in a short notice, and so we're just using uh, most of the structure in one state as far as your assistance concerned, and just a sprinkling of others that participated in the sales to uh, let the audience see what really happened. And you'll have to go into this detail, Herb, because you're the one that directed it. The, uh, uh, the only way that you can really understand this is, is uh, to understand the basic structure of our organization, Orrin Lee. The Grain Department has a number of assistants working directly under the Grain uh, uh, Commodity Department of the National Office. These assistants are assigned a geographical area, not necessarily staying within state lines. Under these assistants, there may be other national assistants. And then we go down through the marketing zone and into the county grain bargaining committee structure, which reaches right down into the county organization, which we have always considered the basic and almost the most important uh, organization within NFO because this gets down to the grassroots member. Now, at this point, I would like to start off here and uh, uh, briefly call these assistants by name and then have them give their address and the county where they live and uh, describe briefly the area where they work. Uh, Henry and uh, John, and Morris, Charlie, Cliff, and Marvin, uh, there are others besides that in the state of Iowa, but these gentlemen were able to, to come in here today. And Henry, why don't you lead off with your name and where you live and uh, the area where you work? Well, my name is Henry Erickson. I'm from Remsen, Iowa, in Plymouth County, in northwest Iowa. And I'm an assistant for the NFO in that grain department. And uh, the boys up there worked wonderful. They did everything that you could expect them for to do. Thank you, Henry. John? I'm John Robeson from Dysart, Iowa, living on the Benton Tama County line, coordinating the grain sales efforts from some 13 counties of the uh, Atumwa Grain Marketing Area, which is located in southeast Iowa. Thank you, John. Morris? My name is Morris Godsey, Whiting, Iowa, Monona County. I helped coordinate the sale of grain in northeast Nebraska the past week. The cooperation from the boys out in the county was terrific. Morris, Charlie. My name is Charles Older King. I live at Sergeant Bluff, Iowa, Woodbury County. I'm a national grain assistant. I have three other assistants with me. Over the 16 or 20 counties that I work in West Central Iowa. I have nothing but praise for the manner in which the boys conducted themselves once we found their 
ship was A-OK -okay all the way. Thank you, darling. Cliff? Well, I'm Cliff Olson from Cedar Falls, Iowa, which is in Blackhawk County. And I assisted the National Grain Department on uh, the sale of this uh, grain. And uh, the area I worked was the east central part of Iowa. There were nine counties involved in my area. Thank you, Marvin. I'm Marvin Nelson from Cambridge, Iowa, Story County, Iowa. I was in charge of five uh, central Iowa counties on their bargaining and selling program. Thank you, Marvin. Now, Warren Lee, we also have here uh, a group of the members who may or may not have been elected personnel from the counties, but they were designated uh, people to carry out these grain sales actually make them. And I would like well, to... I tell you, I'd like to interrupt you a minute. I think this is so significant of what uh, uh, these... Uh, the these, fact that we these... did make a sale? Well, no, uh, the fact that, uh, that you have so many people here that can coordinate the efforts. Uh, and I think what is so significant, the reason I wanted to interrupt you, you've introduced six assistants here, and you have uh, some 30 assistants like this over the whole area. Uh, all of them farmers. This is right. You're in contact uh, once or twice a week with most of them by telephone. This is right. And in order to show how this operation went off, in order for the grain trade not to recognize what was going to happen, uh, you had meetings with these assistants and gave them uh, a target date, as I understand, uh, that when expected for the, the bargaining and sales efforts to go off over the area, and, uh, but you didn't tell them exactly when it was going this to be. This is true. It's and you did this uh, several days ago, and uh, then you were to give them a code. Uh, were they then would uh, contact uh, the men that are working under them. Some of them referred to three or four that helped them right. direct. And then this information got out a little farther, and then when the code uh, was received by them, uh, they then uh, contacted their men as assistants under them, and then it went out to the counties, and they all met. And uh, Herb, uh, I know you're very proud of the fact that uh, that not a leak that you know of uh, when it went out to these counties and in all over a 16-state area. Uh, and in uh, Iowa, I know most of the counties were involved in sales. Uh, and uh, this really broadened the security risk, you might say. Uh, That's true. Uh, I just wanted to comment on that, Herb, because this I is, think it's... This is true, Arne Lee, and I think this points up the dedication and determination of NFO leaders and members that we can carry out this sort of thing because our very existence is at stake. Well, Herb, I think that it's so important to also to show that farmers can do this. Nobody has ever done this, uh, uh, anything like this. And farmers were doing it together and working together. I didn't want to take up much of the time because I know that with, although most of the counties in Iowa uh, had sales at a few uh, in the, within the counties, I know that you want to, well, because they said they couldn't even find a sale uh, to show uh, how ridiculous that is, to show how uninformed uh, the people in the grain uh, trade were. We really know they weren't, Herb, because we had reports uh, from several that the lines were burning uh, uh, with conversation going on, what's happening, uh, the war is going from one to the other. Uh, some of them couldn't even get into the big buyers for quite a little time and all this, but uh, in order to, here I know you have, it, well, it would be impossible to have everybody uh, that was involved in it. This studio wouldn't be near large enough to hold That's it. Right. Uh, but here to show some of the people that were actually involved uh, as representing the NFO members actually made the sales in this coordinated effort. Uh, why don't you take it from there, Herb? But I thought this other was significant. Well, I want to stress again what you said, that all of these gentlemen here, as are the three of us, are farmers. So uh, at this point, I'm going to start out with uh, Al over here from uh, Crawford County, Al Swery. And would you fellas give your uh, names and uh, just mention briefly, I might say at this point that uh, uh, because of the volume sales, Orrin Lee, we did receive a premium for the volume of grain <coughs> that we were selling uh, in these counties or in these, in these various uh, grain outlets. Yeah, and Her, uh, Herb, as I under, excuse me, I, uh, right. but as I understand what was happening was that were a large volume brought together even in the county that the buyers, if it was sold to the county elevators many times because of the volume involved, uh, more right. than one farmer could sell, they were able to get a premium right. uh, in right. the cases where a lot of volume, proving that collective, collective bargaining, bargaining is working. Right. All right, Al, would you lead off? 
I'm Al Fortuary from Manila, Iowa, Crawford County, and uh, I made sales for the NFO members of that county as, uh, and got a premium for the, the volume we had at the elevators. Thank you, Al. What, what time was he at the At 2.30 p.m. on February the 23rd. Henry? I am Henry Voles from Elkhart, Iowa, Polk County. I was assigned by the county chairman, along with another fellow NFO member, to a bargaining team. We walked into our local elevator at 2.30 on February 23rd. We had a very good reception. We made a good sale, we think. We think we got a premium. Thank you. Joe? My name is Gerald Robinson from Baxter, Iowa, Jasper County. We. Uh, I helped represent a team to go in and sell grain for our members in our county. This sale was made at 2.30, February 23rd, and it was our initial sale. I'm Dwayne Redlinger from Washington County, Iowa. I'm the elected grain chairman for that county. We found that on that afternoon of February 23rd at 2.30, it's much more beneficial to sell as a group as it is as an individual. Gilbert? I am uh, Gilbert Roddinghouse from Blackhawk County. I and my committee sold the members corn and soybeans in, in our county on the afternoon of the 23rd. And uh, the members were satisfied. And uh, in general, there was cooperation amongst everyone in this operation. Thank you. I'm Harold Glazer from New Hampton, Iowa. Chickasaw County NFO Grain Chairman. Uh, we had four, four groups go out and sell grain to our different elevators in Chickasaw County. And we made, uh, through volume, we made uh, above board price that day. What time were you there? 2.30 we made our sales, <laughs> every one of us. <laughs> we wanted to be sure of that. Lloyd? <coughs> I'm Lloyd Zabrod from Ionia, Iowa. I live in Chickasaw County and I'm also chairman of that county. I helped Harold make uh, some of these sales at our local elevator. We did it on the 23rd of February at 2.30 in the afternoon and we received a premium over the board price. Well, thank you, gentlemen. Now in the back row there, Arn Lee, we have some other members that were involved in various capacities in this program, but because we're running a little short on time here, I'm going to ask those gentlemen if they will just stand so the camera can uh, catch them here. Would you gentlemen stand up? They were involved somewhere along in this effort, and of course there were many, many more. These, uh, Thank you, gentlemen. This is fine, Herb, and I think that that the story that you have been able to present here uh, by the, through the efforts of the Grain Commodity Department should be very significant for farmers. You have just used the state of Iowa here as an example of what happened throughout the 16 state area. It seems to me that it should be so significant to any farmer listening to realize at least that this great coordinated effort is a giant step forward in bargaining and that collective bargaining does mean farmers bargaining together and selling together under one organization, one structure, industry-wide. You couldn't do it if you had many different structures and many different organizations, or you couldn't do it if you had uh, just a little representation in one area. But when you're talking about many millions of bushels being sold, uh, some of the people said that it was not only the volume that impressed the grain trade, and that has had them nervous and had them jumpy, but it was the fact that, that the coordinated effort that was evident to them is what has really uh, shook them up. Uh, John, uh, what is your impression uh, of this uh, entire effort? Uh, what, what do you think has been learned from this, and where do, uh, what should farmers uh, do now? Well, Arne Lee, uh, the farmers, of course, uh, in our organization deserve nothing but congratulations for the tremendous job that they did. I think that they proved once and for all that farmers can and will work together. And to our farmer friends out there, wherever you may be, I would like to ask you to join NFO today. We have the structure, as we have demonstrated to you here today, to do this job. 
We need your help and your production with ours to complete it. John, may I add one thing to that? We have only one purpose in NFO, as we have said many times, and that is to obtain the cost of production plus a fair profit for the American farmer. We have no other goals. Oh, this I, this, and I think this is significant what Herb has brought out. We cannot go into business. Therefore, we're not setting up elevators to compete with the this local right. elevators. We are only bringing our production together for the purpose of bargaining for the sale of that production. And therefore, when we brought a lot of volume together, uh, which individual members couldn't do, this meant that we were able to be effective in bargaining. This is collective bargaining working. And I hope that, uh, that the people that are listening realize that the future of agriculture and who does the buying and who does the selling is going to depend on, the, on what farmers themselves do, Herb. Uh, are they going to go out here as individuals and continue in their ways as they always have, or are they going to recognize everybody else is organized and, and they should organize and work together? Herb, what's the future plans of the Green Commodity Department? Well, naturally, Orrin Lee, we are going to move forward with even a larger sign-up in our future selling periods. Uh, I want to stress one thing here, that this is up to the individual member when he signs his grain and how much he signs in the selling period. So the member is not told. He has the choice of how much and when he wants to sell it. And by and large, many, or I would almost say most of our members, do wait until later in the marketing year before they market their grain only. So, Naturally, we are looking forward to a much larger increased sign-up on grain in the two remaining selling periods than what we had even on this one. And I would like to wind up here by saying that it seems to me like that our only goal as farmers right now, since we have demonstrated that this kind of an effort can be done in grain as well as in other commodities in the NFO, that the thing to do now is to join NFO, sign our production, and let's all sell together. Well, Herb, I think your statements and yours, John, are so significant. It seems to me that any farmer listening could see that this program is actually working, that farmers are carrying it out, that the sale of grain is in the hands of farmers, that they are working together and cooperating together. This is collective bargaining, bargaining together and selling together. And I just want you to think about this for a moment. We advised our members to store at harvest time, to hold that, to pick the time they wanted to sell, and then the sales would be made together. This, of course, has the effect of shorting the market and bringing the price up. This is bargaining. But you know what? The members that sold in this coordinated effort got 40 to 50 cents a bushel more for their soybeans than the farmers that sold at harvest time, and 15 to 20 cents a bushel more for their corn than the farmers that sold at harvest time. This is worth your effort. Join and be a part of us. Farmers, the National Farmers Organization is leading the way towards a brighter, more prosperous agriculture. In this effort, you need their help, and they need your help. Join and sell together with your neighbors through the NFO today. U.S. Farm Report was brought to you today and each week at the same time by your friends and neighbors who are members of the National Farmers Organization in this area. On their behalf, we urge you to join and support the NFO. For more information on the National Farmers Organization, contact the local chapter in your county or write NFO, Corning, Iowa.